All living things need food to survive. As humans, we like to eat a variety of different types of food to keep ourselves healthy and strong. Often, we like to eat food that is made from several different ingredients and is cooked by some type of energy source like fire or heat. This delicious looking omelet, for example, has ingredients that include eggs, ham, onions, and peppers. These ingredients are combined and cooked over the flame from the stove. That flame is the energy source that cooks our omelet to perfection. We like to eat many different types of food. Sometimes we like to eat raw fruits and vegetables, but sometimes we like to combine different ingredients to create some of our favorite dishes like our omelet. But what about plants? How do they get the food they need to grow? The answer is that plants make their own food. In some ways, their process for making food is similar to how we make our omelet. It involves several ingredients and an energy source to make the food perfect for the plant to use. Plants make their own food through a chemical reaction called photosynthesis. The word photosynthesis comes from two Greek words, photo, which means light, and synthesis, which means putting together. In order for photosynthesis to occur, plants need three ingredients, carbon dioxide, water, and sunlight. Let's take a closer look at each of these ingredients. Carbon dioxide, or CO2, is a gas made of one carbon and two oxygen molecules. It is found in our air. People and animals exhale carbon dioxide whenever we breathe out. Water is the next ingredient needed for photosynthesis. Whether we use a garden hose to water our plants or the plants get their water from rainfall, it is the roots of plants that absorb the water that is used in photosynthesis. Finally, we need the energy to get photosynthesis started. This is where the sun comes in. The leaves and green stems of plants absorb the light energy from the sun and convert it into chemical energy. You already know some of the basic facts of photosynthesis. Ready to test what you know? Let's start with this question. What is photosynthesis? A. The underground roots of a plant. B. The process by which some plants produce flowers. C. A chemical found in the air. D, the process by which plants make their own food from carbon dioxide, water, and sunlight. The correct answer is D. Photosynthesis is the process by which plants make their own food from carbon dioxide, water, and sunlight. Question two, through which part of the plant is water absorbed? Is it A, the stem, B, the roots, C, the leaves, D, A, and B? The answer is B. The roots are the part of the plant by which water is absorbed. Question three. In what part of the plant is light energy from the sun used in photosynthesis? A, the leaves. B, the green stems. C, the roots. D, A, and B. The correct answer is D, A, and B. The leaves and green stems are the parts of the plant where photosynthesis occurs. Plants need only three ingredients for photosynthesis. Each ingredient is really important because without it, plants can't make their own food. Carbon dioxide, or CO2, is the first ingredient needed for photosynthesis. Here's a quick way to get a better understanding of carbon dioxide. Try this with me. Take a deep breath. Now, let it out. What you are exhaling is carbon dioxide. Once you and all the other humans and animals on the planet breathe out, carbon dioxide is released into our air. Carbon dioxide, or CO2, is a gas made up of one carbon atom and two hydrogen atoms. But how exactly do plants use carbon dioxide to make food? Like us, plants need to breathe. 
However, instead of having lungs, plants have tiny openings called stomata on the undersides of their leaves. The stomata are like tiny windows that allow plants to absorb CO2 from the atmosphere. Once inside the leaves, CO2 is taken up by tiny organelles inside the leaf called chloroplasts. We'll learn more about what happens in chloroplasts in a few minutes. Ready to test what you just learned about our first ingredient, CO2? Here is question one. CO2 is a gas made up of one carbon and how many oxygen atoms? A, one, B, two, C, three, D, there are no oxygen atoms in CO2. The correct answer is B. There are two oxygen atoms in CO2 gas. Question two, what do we call the tiny openings in leaves that allow plants to absorb CO2? A, veins, B, chlorophyll, C, stomata, D, chemical energy. The answer is C. Stomata are the tiny openings in leaves that allow plants to absorb CO2. Question three. In which part of the plant is CO2 taken up and used for photosynthesis? A, roots. B, chloroplasts. C, stomata. D, A, and C. The correct answer is B. Chloroplasts use CO2 for photosynthesis. Now that we have added our first ingredient, CO2, let's go ahead and add another, water. How do plants take in the water they need? Well, plants use their underground roots to absorb water from the soil. Once inside the roots, the water is transported from the ground up to the leaves through a series of tube-like structures called xylem. Xylem is like the plant's drinking straw. It plays an important role in photosynthesis because it brings the water from the ground up to the leaves where photosynthesis takes place. As the water reaches the leaves of the plant, it joins the CO2 already waiting in the structures called chloroplasts. Stay tuned to find out what happens in the chloroplasts that really gets this plant cooking. Ready to test what you know about water's role in photosynthesis? Here's question one. Water is absorbed through which part of the plant? A, stem. B, leaves. C, roots. D, stomata. The correct answer is C. Roots absorb water for the plant. Question two. What is the name of the tube-like structure that transports water to the leaves of the plant? A, chloroplasts. B, roots. C, xylem. D, veins. The correct answer is C. Xylem is the tube-like structure that transports water to the leaves of the plant. Question three. Which structure within the plant uses water for photosynthesis? A, stem. B, roots. C, xylem. D, chloroplasts. The correct answer is D. Chloroplasts use water for photosynthesis. Now that our plant has two of its ingredients for making food, CO2 and water, what it needs is power and energy to get the photosynthesis process started. But where will all this energy come from? You guessed it, the sun. You may be wondering how the plant gets and uses energy from the sun to make food through photosynthesis. Plants trap light or solar energy with their leaves. Inside the leaves are structures called chloroplasts. Remember them? The chloroplasts are like the plant's kitchen. Much of the food making action happens here. It is in the chloroplasts that the solar energy is turned into chemical energy. This new chemical energy makes glucose, a type of sugar. This sugar is what the plants use for food. 
Chloroplasts contain a special green pigment called chlorophyll. Chlorophyll has a big job to do. It is responsible for trapping and taking in all of the sun's energy. Chlorophyll gets the photosynthesis process started. Here's an interesting fact about chlorophyll. The light from the sun has many colors. However, chlorophyll doesn't need all of these colors to start photosynthesis. It only needs and absorbs red and blue wavelengths. The chlorophyll doesn't absorb the color green and instead reflects it. This reflection is what makes the leaves of the plant look green. In the fall, plants stop producing chlorophyll, so their leaves change colors. Once chlorophyll takes in or absorbs energy from the sun, a chemical reaction starts. This energy combines with CO2 and water. When the CO2, water, and solar energy react together, they produce a sugar that the plant can use for food. This is not the same type of refined sugar we find in candy or cookies, but rather it is a simple sugar called glucose. Glucose is not the only thing plants produce during photosynthesis. As the glucose is being made in the chloroplasts, plants are also making oxygen. Wow, our plant really got cooking. Let's make sure we know its recipe. Question one, what is the name of the leaf structures in which plants trap solar energy? A, organelles. B, chloroplasts. C, glucose. D, oxygen. The correct answer is B. Chloroplasts are the structures within leaves which trap solar energy. Question two, which of the sunlight's colors does chlorophyll absorb? A, red. B, blue. C, green. D, A and B. The correct answer? D. Chlorophyll absorbs both red and blue colors from the sun. Question three. What is the name of the simple sugar produced by plants during photosynthesis? A. Chlorophyll. B. Sucralose. C. Glucose. D. Fructose. The correct answer is C. Glucose is the simple sugar produced by plants during photosynthesis. Earlier, we learned that during photosynthesis, plants produce glucose, a simple sugar they need to grow. Photosynthesis allows plants to make enough glucose to use during the night and on cloudy days when they don't get sunlight. This extra glucose is stored as starch in the plant's leaves, stems, flowers, fruit, seeds, and roots. We also learned that during photosynthesis, Plants produce oxygen. Plants don't need this oxygen, but we do. The oxygen produced by plants is released into the atmosphere through the stomata, the window-like openings in the leaves that allowed the CO2 into the plant at the beginning of the process. When we breathe in the oxygen released by plants, we then breathe out CO2. And guess what? The whole process begins again. Here's a thinking question. Why are green plants important to both people and animals?